What's going on everybody and welcome to this week's video. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Jorge Zapata. I go by Jay Zapata the Barber on Instagram. But you guys, in this haircut, I am doing a low fade with the crew cut on top. And I'm also going to be fading the beard, so definitely check it out because this is going to be a little bit of a transformation. And I actually really struggled with this haircut, believe it or not. And for this haircut, I am using the Oster Fast Feeds, and here I have my number two guard. And I'm basically just going to be removing all the bulk on the side and on the back. And if you guys notice, my guideline is basically going to be really low just because that, that's going to be the entire idea for the low fade. So now here, just for more visibility purposes, I'm going to be going in uh, with my clipper over comb just to go ahead and knock down a little bit more of the bulk. Not necessarily doing a lot of detail work. This is basically just to allow me to be able to see my guidelines a lot better. So now to set in the bald guideline, I will be using my Andis Cordless T outliner. And I'm really gonna be setting it as low as I can because I'm not gonna really have that much room to work with, especially since this is gonna be a low fade. Now going back to my Oscar fast feeds with the lever all the way open, I'm going to go in and create a guideline going up about 3 quarters of an inch. Now I normally use my cordless magic clips for every single haircut but uh, the day before I actually took all my starters home because I was going to do a house call and I ended up forgetting them. And that's kind of one of the worst feelings as a barber in my opinion, not having your starters there, not having your hitters. It just makes everything a lot more difficult. And I'm not saying that the Oster Fast Feed is a bad clipper, and which is not because it's actually one of my favorite clippers to use. I just prefer to use the Magic Clips. But here I went ahead and closed the lever all the way and I'm going to start to blend out the bottom line, flicking up about a quarter of an inch and really just using the corner of my blade to get around the ear. So now here I'm opening the lever to the halfway point and continuing to blend the bottom line up a quarter of an inch. Uh, this should pretty much fully blend out the bottom line. Alright you guys, so now here using my number one guard with the lever all the way open, I'm going to go ahead and create a new guideline going up about one inch this time. And I'm making sure that I'm staying underneath uh, what I previously had done with the number two guard all the way open just because this step is a little bit shorter than that step. So I'm just going to go in and try to blend it in to the two and a half.
so now here I have the zero guard with the lever all the way open and I'm gonna go in and start to down fade from the very top just underneath the one guard all the way open <laughs> So now I adjusted the lever to the halfway position and just um, continuing to go lower each and every single time, making sure that I stay underneath the zero guard all the way open. So now here I'm closing the lever all the way and I'm basically just going to be going in doing detail work with the corners. So here I took off the guard on my Oscar fast speeds and I'm going to be going in just to do little detail work because my client does have like a lot of dips in his head that makes some parts of his hair a lot darker than the others and this is really why I really struggled with it especially not having my wall magic clips just because I'm so used to using them. So going back to the fast feeds it was kind of a little bit of a different system. So here for the back of his neck, we're going to be doing the exact same step, starting with the lever all the way open using the zero guard. So now here I have the number two guard once again and with the lever all the way open, I'm just going to kind of uh, refresh what I had previously done just because at the very beginning it was only just to remove the bulk and I wasn't really going in to do a lot of the detail work. Here I went ahead and attached the number 3 guard and continuing to blend up using the lever all the way open, I'm going to just be flicking out as much as I can just to help the transition from the fade to the top. So here I ended up sectioning off the top of his head. It's about a little bit higher than where his head starts to round out. And this is basically just to give me enough length right there on the side to be able to blend it in as much as I can. And right here I'm just grabbing vertical sections and I'm making sure that I see my initial guideline which was a number three guard all the way open. And I'm just gonna continue blending that up in a 45 degree angle.
Now here for the back part, I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing, starting off with the section right a little bit above to where the head starts to round out. So anytime I'm trimming down any type of length on the top, my steps are usually all the same. I always like to ask my client exactly how much length he wants cut off. And once we decide on a length, I like to follow that from front to back. But typically the back, I always like to leave it shorter than the, than the front, if that makes sense. I, I just feel like it leaves the haircut flowing a lot better and it just gives it an overall better shape. So not to style his hair, I will be using a Dyson blow dryer and I am using it in a medium heat. And my client likes a messy type of hairstyle so there's really no need for comb or brushes. I'm just going in with my hand just to really mess it all up. The only time I'm really going to be using the brush is for the back just because I like it to be a little more neat than the front. So my client wanted me to trim the side of the beard and kind of match it to where the light part is on the cheek. So here I was kind of just going in with the number two guard with the grain and I noticed that wasn't low enough. So I started going against the grain and that started to look a little bit better, but I wasn't completely satisfied. So I did mention to my client if he wants to do like a little bit of a fade on the beard, which I thought would look really dope. And at the end, he did end up agreeing, so... So when I faded the beard, I ended up using the exact same steps as I did on the side. Now here to line up the beard, I always like to start off in the bottom side of the beard and using my babyless trimmers, I always like to go in and kind of freehand shape the bottom. Now for me, anytime I'm doing any type of beard, I typically like to leave the front area longer than the sides. And you guys are going to notice that I'm using two trimmers, one to just strictly line up, which are these, the, uh, the babyless ones. And then I'm going to go in with the Andes T-Outliners just to like really shave off any of the hair that I don't want. 
and that's only because these babyless trimmers are basically only for lining up i have them gapped pretty sharp so i definitely do not want to irritate the skin by going up and down just to go ahead and uh, knock down the hair Now to finish off the haircut, I will be using my straight edge razor at a 45 degree angle to make sure that I'm cleaning up any of the little stubble hair left behind and making sure that the line is as crispy as it possibly could be. But here's the before, just in case you guys forgot how my client came in, he desperately did need a haircut. And this is the after. I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, feel free to hit that thumbs up. Leave your guys' comments in the comment section down below with any feedback that you guys may have. But like always, I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.